Hi there, this is Heather of Shutterbug 101. Today we'll be going over the Canon SX70 Power Shot camera and all the buttons, doors, and menus to it. Let's get started. The Canon PowerShot SX70 bridge camera has a 20 megapixel half inch sensor that has the ability to shoot raw and has a 65 times zoom. This camera has a fully articulating 3 inch LCD screen to help you achieve different angles and perspectives, has manual modes for more control, and has a continuous drive at 10 frames per second. It also has 4K video, a microphone port for better, more direct sound, and Wi-Fi so you can use the Canon app to transfer your images to your smart device. Today we will be going over the buttons, doors, and menus to help you become more familiar and comfortable with your camera. So going over the SX70 today, uh, when it comes to bridge cameras, this one does fairly well. Uh, with its half inch sensor, you know, it won't give you the best in low light availability considering that its aperture is a 3.5 four to 6.5. Um, but if you're just a, a person that wants to do more than their cell phone, uh, you want to be able to zoom out quite a bit. Uh, you have family members that you like to take pictures of um, at family events or get togethers. Um, you know, this is going to be a great for a middle of the day, wanting to get a little bit more distance sort of camera. Uh, great for general animal watching, that sort of thing because of its zoom. Uh, so its zoom is an equivalent of a 21 to 1,365 zoom, um, which is an equivalent of that 65 times. So if you were to put a lens on this guy, that is what it would be. Uh, now this camera does have a digital zoom available. I will show you that in the menu later on, uh, but I would turn that off on this camera um, because a lot of people go, well, why? I want to get more zoom than what the 65 gets me. Well, the digital zoom, will essentially just, you know, zoom in closer to what its max is and it degrades the quality. So you'll see more pixels, it won't be clear, you won't be happy with it. So I would just turn it off and, you know, have the 65 zoom available. So we're gonna go ahead and start with the front of the camera here. So on the side, we do have a few buttons. So this is going to be uh, one way to zoom back and forth with this camera. The other way is gonna be on top here next to our shutter button. Uh, this is going to be a faster zoom. This is going to be a little bit of a slower zoom. You can change that in the menu uh, when it comes to the speed. Uh, but say you're in the middle of doing a video, which is possible with this camera, uh, this zoom is going to be better than this zoom because it's a little bit smoother, slower graduation uh, versus something that's really, really fast. Uh, this button here, uh, you can actually set to um, like if you have a favorite zoom spot and it's not out all the way somewhere in the middle, uh, but you don't want to go through and try and find that perfect spot again, all you have to do is hit this button and it'll automatically zoom out to that spot that it's saved to. That's something you can do in the menu. Uh, and this button here is to center your uh, autofocus. So if your autofocus is moved for any reason over to the side, you want to center it back up. That's just going to be a shortcut to do it right there. This here is going to feature an LED light um, in this little spot here. Um, what that does is when you try and focus by pushing halfway down on your shutter button, which is right here, and it's having a hard time focusing it because it's dark, there's not enough detail, whatever it is, this will shine out a little light forward um, onto the subject that you're trying to take a picture of. So it'll help it to focus a little bit, uh, a little bit better going on to the side of the camera here we do have a little door so this top port here is going to be for a shutter release um, so when you plug that in you have a little remote control it's going to be for long exposures uh, group pictures that sort of thing you should be able to use your cell phone as well to uh, use your cell phone as a remote with the application but as far as I know, uh, at the moment when you do that, it saves it as a JPEG image, not a raw image. So if you're shooting in raw, you're going to want to get a uh, shutter release separately. Um, we do have the transfer 
port here. So if you want to transfer your pictures from the camera to your computer, um, you just have to use the cord to plug it in here and plug it into your computer there. You can also do firmware upgrades if they are available. This is going to be an HDMI cable port if you want to connect your camera to your television set so you can look at your pictures or show your pictures as a slideshow, something like that. That's what that's going to be for. The other side of the camera here, uh, this, these little slots here is going to be our speaker. So if you took a video and you go to play it back, it's actually going to play right out of here. And then in this little door, we have our mic port. So it's where you're going to uh, put your mic at is uh, plugged in right in there. And you might find uh, when you do hook up a mic that there's no spot on here to connect a shotgun mic to. Um, so, you know, you will have to buy some sort of like a like a scorpion handle, uh, something like that, where you can uh, hook it onto if that's something that you want to pursue. Um, I'm not exactly sure why they didn't really think about that, but just so you're aware, uh, if you go and get a mic and you're like, okay, so I plugged it in, now what do I do with it? Uh, you'll have to get some sort of handle. When it comes to the bottom of the camera, here we have our universal screw mount, as uh, with every camera here that's going to go on any tripod. Uh, we do have our little door here, so if we pop that door open, We'll be able to pop up the battery and uh, this is where our SD card is going to go. Now the SD card is spring loaded so in order to take out the card you're going to push down before you take it out. Do not try and pry it out of the camera uh, because you will break that um, gizmo in there and then you're going to be out of luck. Um, going to the top of the camera here we can see that we have our model of the camera displays that we have 4K video and Wi-Fi. Um, this is going to be our pop-up flash, which you actually do by yourself by just lifting up on that there and then putting it down when you don't want it. Um, you know, very, very simple there. If you want to use it, you pop it up. If you don't, keep it down. This is going to be your Wi-Fi button to connect directly to your smartphone or smart device. So this is our on and off switch. So you can see when we turn it on here, the lens does come out a bit. The only way to get this to go all the way back into the barrel is to turn the camera off. So do be aware of this. Also, when you zoom with this lever here, it does come out quite a bit more. Now, this is probably going to be the weakest part of the camera. Uh, the most common thing to happen with point and shoot and bridge cameras is because it does have the, um, the zoom coming out of the barrel here, as you can see, is that if this gets bumped, if this gets dropped, if it gets wet, even if you're in a dusty environment and dust lands on this barrel, gets sucked into here, it can actually gum up the motor in here that controls this and it'll break. Um, it's the most common issue that I see that happens. So if you do purchase this camera, I highly recommend getting a warranty with it that protects it from those drops and water damage and all that. Uh, that way, at least, if something does happen to this guy, it's protected. You don't have to buy another camera, which is kind of nice. And of course, if we zoom it back in, that's going to be the smallest uh, way to go when it comes to uh, protection. So keep that in mind. Uh, this here is going to be our adjustment dial. So depending on what setting we're on on our dial, which we'll go over here in a minute, that'll change different settings. Um, before I go over these here, in case I have to use a screen, I do have an articulating screen on this guy, which is like this guy here. So it'll allow you to get uh, low angles, high angles, flip it around to do selfie screen, that sort of thing. And it also flips back around to how it was uh, the first moment I brought the camera out, um, where it'll protect the LCD screen if you're not using it. Um, so it's a nice little feature that you can have on this camera. Um, so we'll go ahead and go over the mode dial at this point. We're going to start on auto. So auto mode is going to be the dial and focus here. Auto mode, you are completely letting the camera take control. Uh, you don't have any control whatsoever on how it takes the pictures. You're letting the camera figure all that out and assume for you. This is a great mode to start on to get used to your camera. Keep that in mind. Um, the next step down here 
It is going to be a A with a camera and a film strip. What this does is um, after so much time on being auto mode, what it does is if you leave the camera alone, it kind of goes into a sleep mode and it turns the screen off. When you're in this mode, it's going to keep that live view mode on as long as you have the camera on. Um, so that's really going to be the biggest difference there. We go down here, that's going to be our panoramic mode. You're going to move from left to right uh, in a smooth action to get a wide establishing shot. You're not going to go up and down with it. Uh, something to keep in mind there. We have our sports mode, which is going to uh, be an auto preset, uh, very similar to what we're going to see in our scene mode here in a minute. Uh, where we're telling the camera, hey, still take control, but this is specifically what I'm taking a picture of. So sports, that's what you're going to use there. It's going to know, all right, I'm going to take control, but I know that there are going to be fast moving objects. Scene mode, we switch that and we hit our uh, quick menu setting here. That's going to allow us to change our shooting mode. So if we go through here, we have fireworks, handheld night scene, food, smooth skin, and portrait. Uh, that's all there is there. That's all the presets when it comes to um, special situations. And we'll actually, we'll go over the quick menu more here in a moment. Uh, these two circles intersecting here, it's going to be your creative filter mode. So again, if we click the quick menu here. Uh, that's going to allow us to have creative filters like black and white, miniature effect, toy camera, water painting, fish eye, soft focus. Uh, so it all depends on um, it all depends on what you want to do and the effect that you want to have. Then we have our video camera here, which is going to allow us to shoot video. Now you don't have to be in your video camera mode in order to do a video. You could be in your auto mode easily and all you have to do to take a video is push the red button. So if you push the red button once, it'll start recording, push it again, it should stop recording. And it's gonna give you about a 29, uh, a 29 minute limit. The P mode is gonna be our program mode. So the P mode is gonna be your first step off of auto. Uh, it's gonna stand for program. Uh, what it does is it is auto mode, but it gives you control over certain aspects. So where you want to focus, how you want to focus, um, you know, you can change your aperture or shutter speed or vice versa. And the camera chooses everything else that you don't change. Uh, so you're guaranteed a properly exposed image. So it's a great mode to start learning what makes a photograph on. Uh, you can also check out uh, my why you should quit your auto mode for your P mode to learn a little bit more why you would do that. TV is going to stand for uh, time value. That's going to be your shutter speed mode. It's to control how fast uh, it takes the picture. So if you want to stop motion or show motion, uh, very similar to our B-roll footage, uh, we had to use our TV mode and really slow down the shutter speed to be able to capture the motion of the lights. Uh, so that's something that you would use there. AV mode, your aperture variable, that's going to control the opening in the lens. Now this is going to be a great way to get that blurry background sharp foreground, very similar to how you're seeing my video here, how my hands are blurry, but the camera, top of the camera is in focus. Um, you can also get that starburst effect uh, by using AV mode. To learn more about that, you can go ahead and head to my video in the link. Um, labeling why I would use my a, my aperture mode. M is going to be for manual, full manual. So you have every little bit of control there. Camera's not helping you out at all. Uh, so you probably won't find yourself on this mode a lot, especially on this camera. And that's perfectly fine. Do want to let you know that. Uh, and then of course we have C1, C2. These are going to be our custom modes. So what this is, is for instance, you're shooting a video in regular lighting like I am now. Uh, my LED lights are always set in the same place. So by finding the perfect setting to take pictures in with the same lighting each time, you can save it to your custom mode. That way, if you go outside and you take pictures and you want to come back and continue shooting in the same light, all you have to do is go to your C1 or C2 mode, wherever you saved it at. 
And for the rest of the video, I'm going to be going over the different settings and whatnot in RP mode here. Uh, because when we go over the menus and the quick menu, uh, you may find that if you're in your auto mode, a lot of it's going to be grayed out or unavailable. And I want to make sure that you know everything that's available on this camera. Um, just, you know, so you're aware and you know what to work toward. So now we're going to go over the back of the camera. As you can see here, the, this camera does have a viewfinder option, which is awesome. This is going to be really great for those hard lighting situations. If you are someone that wears glasses, uh, wears contacts, and you have a hard time seeing through here, there is a little dial at the bottom of the viewfinder here that you can adjust back and forth. Kind of like if you see, if you look really closely, do you see it moving back and forth in there? Uh, so it's kind of like when you go to the eye doctor and they go slide one, slide two, slide one, slide two, which one's better? Um, so you can adjust this so it's clear to your eyes. And once you've uh, adjusted it, you shouldn't have to adjust it again. Um, now on this camera here, it does have a sensor. So if you were to bring this up to your face to look, look into it, what it's going to do is, uh, it's going to turn your viewfinder on because it's electronic. When you bring your face away, it turns your screen on for you. So it's, you know, it's automatic. It's all set for you. So you don't have to worry about it. So we have our info button here. So if we hit our info button, all it's going to change is how the screen is displayed, how much you want uh, to see on it. I personally like this one. It's the simplest way to go. It's going to show us uh, how many pictures we have left, how much recording time we have left, uh, sort of thing. Also, you'll see on your, you know, any of your modes here, if it's off for any certain amount of time, it's just going to put it to sleep uh, if we're not doing anything. To get it to wake back up, or if you have, um, if you're like stuck in a menu, something like that, your universal escape button is going to be to push this halfway down. So it's going to be your shutter button halfway down. That's your escape button. All right. Uh, if we push up, that's going to activate our exposure mode. Um, so if you turn the dial up on top here, up to positive, it's going to make it brighter. If you turn it to negative, it's going to make it darker. Uh, so it's just an easy way to adjust your brightness or darkness uh, without changing any major settings. If we go to the right here, that controls our flash. So we can turn our flash off, auto flash, force flash on. Let's see. Going over to the left, that's going to help us control our focusing. So you have macro focus, you have normal focusing for every day, and you have manual focus uh, if you wanted to manually focus your lens. Uh, and then of course we have our trash cam button, which is going to be tied into our play button here. Uh, so by having our play button, if you wanted to delete, all you have to do is hit the trash can and go erase. And that's all you got to do. Our quick menu, this is where you're going to find that you're going to be changing a lot of, uh, just your usual settings. Your quick menu, the whole purpose to have that is to keep you from going into your actual menu. So when we do go over the actual menu, keep in mind that a lot of it might be repeated. So starting in our quick menu, this is going to be where it's autofocusing, our autofocus method. Uh, so you have where it's going to focus on faces, tracking for animals, spot autofocus, where you can pick a direct area, and then one point, uh, which is going to be extremely specific. Uh, if you got a lot of people in your life, that sort of thing, I would just stick on the face. That way it just grabs onto the person um, and focuses on them right away. Um, how it's autofocusing. Okay, your autofocus operation it has one shot or servo. You have two options. One shot is going to be where the camera autofocuses and locks onto a subject. So if it's something still, if it's a landscape, if it's someone posing, one shot's going to be the best option. Um, servo is going to be uh, when the subject's moving. So animals, sports, that sort of thing, it's going to focus as the subject moves. Uh, so you'll change that accordingly. Drive mode is going to be like what happens when you push the shutter button. The single square, of course, is going to take one picture. The high speed continuous, when you click and hold the button down, it's going to take pictures at 10 frames per second. And then of course you have your timer modes as well. Um, 
Let's see, then we have our metering modes here. Uh, so this is where it's going to be taking the light. Uh, so as much as you might think cameras don't see in color, they actually see in black and white. And when it finds an 18% gray, that's when it determines it's properly lit. So on this metering mode, evaluative metering, oops, eva evaluative metering, this is going to consider light from the entire frame. Uh, for example, with the way my camera is laid out right now, it's cons it would consider it from the mat, from the camera, from the screen, from my hands. Uh, it would consider lighting hitting all of that and find a general balance. Uh, on spot metering, that allows me to, say, have the camera over here and notice how my, my uh, video just got dark um, because I actually have it on center weighted average where it takes the lighting from whatever's in the center and gives you a, uh, an average there. Spot metering would mean I can meter for my camera over here and get the, the lighting for it over here, but then reframe to have it off to the left or right uh, while still metering for this. We have our image quality. So if you want to do uh, JPEG, RAW, or RAW and JPEG. We have your video size. Uh, if you want to do video, whether it be HD or 4K. You have your ISO, which I recommend just keeping it in auto. Uh, white balance, which controls the temperature, warmer or cooler. Again, I would just keep it in auto. Uh, you can change style settings. Um, right now I have it set to raw, so it won't let me change that, but it lets you do like vivid color, black and white color, sepia, that sort of thing. Uh, auto lighting optimizer, just keep it on auto. And then your aspect ratio, which is just how it prints. Uh, for my videos, I typically want to do 16 by 9 uh, when it comes to, you know, the layout. Um, but regularly, I like doing 3 by 2 because that's the most regular kind of size. It's usually 3 by 2 or 4 by 3. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and head into our menu here. So, starting at the first menu is going to be the red tab. It's going to be our camera. It's going to be our shooting mode. <clears throat> So here again, you can choose your image quality, your ratio, uh, how long you want the image to uh, come up on the screen for after you take it, your flash setting, your drive mode, all of these that you can do uh, in your quick, me uh, quick menu. Uh, ISO speed settings. So say if you're on auto, you can actually set a max for what it should reach. Uh, so in this camera, I would say 800 is actually a really good one to have. Uh, let's see, metering mode, you know, so we've gone over all this, white balance, um, autofocus, where it's autofocusing, how it's autofocusing, again, things that we're seeing in our quick menu. Um, let's see, let's see, safety manual focus, manual focus point zoom, uh, image stabilization settings, this does have image stabilization in here, you want to make sure that's on unless you're on a tripod, something to keep in mind. Well, let's see here, uh, those buttons on the side here, how you can choose how you, how far you want it to zoom out to when you hit that button, your movie recording size, uh, you know, how it's focusing when you're recording. And then we hit our playback menu, which is the blue tab here. You can protect your images, rotate, erase, uh, do red eye corruption. You can do, uh, cropping, resizing, put on a slideshow, you know, all of that in here. Then we hit our yellow tab, which is the wrench. That's going to be our general settings. So you can uh, create a folder uh, or separate folders if you would like in your SD card. You do auto rotate. Uh, now something I do want to go over is formatting your card. I go over this on every walkthrough video because a lot of people don't realize what formatting your card really means. Um, so, so for example, for what you would use this for, if you're about to go on vacation and you want a clear card, you don't want anything else on the card. You want as much room as possible. What you want to do is make sure I cannot stress this enough. Make sure that your pictures are backed up onto your computer. After you've made sure they're backed up onto your computer or an external source to where you know they're safe, you want to make sure that when you put your card in here, you go to format card. You don't want to hit the trash can on all those and just erase all because what the trash can does 
is it erases the visible file, but it saves the data. So it essentially just puts it into a recycling bin for you. And if you just keep using your trash can button over and over again, that trash can eventually gets full and then it starts corrupting future images and it starts creating viruses and you don't want that. So what happens when you format your card is it permanently deletes all the pictures on your card currently um, to how you purchase the card. So it completely resets it. So it's a really good feature to do when you're about to go shoot an event, you're about to go on vacation, you're just ready to clear out the card uh, because it keeps your card healthy. So it's something to keep in mind. Uh, you can have eco mode on if you want to save battery. You know, I'm going to keep mine off because I think that's making it turn off faster. Um, let's see, you got power saving mode. You can do this, 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 bleh, the display brightness. Uh, you can adjust your date, time, and uh, time zone, your language. Uh, if you want that beep enabled when it's focused, the volume, uh, you can set up these two buttons here. Right now they are disabled, so they don't do a single darn thing. Um, your shooting info display, uh, ah, the lens retraction. So after one minute of not doing anything, it'll retract the lens. Uh, your display settings, uh, if you want that startup image where it says Canon on it. Wireless communication settings, set it up to your phone. This camera also uh, features like GPS logging if you'd need to do that. Uh, your custom settings, so you can change that as well. Now, if you get stuck in your, uh, you know, you're messing with different settings, that type of thing, and now your camera is doing something funny, you have no idea what it's doing, um, and you have no one around you that can help. Your safest bet is just to go and reset the camera to how you purchased it. It's not gonna erase your images as long as you don't put format, but if you put reset camera, if you go to reset camera, it's going to reset any, any changes that you made that might be causing you a problem. So something to keep in mind there as well. Okay, you can check your firmware, copyright information, and then the green tab, the last tab here with the star, this is gonna be my menu. What this is, is it allows you to pick things from any of these three tabs and add them to your own custom menu. So, you know, most of these are gonna be in your quick menu, so you don't need them in my menu, but things that maybe aren't in your quick menu that you might change, like format card or reset camera, you can actually add to the my menu tab. That way you don't have to dig through these three. You just have to go to my menu. Um, other than that, it pretty much wraps up this camera. It's a very simple camera. Uh, like I said, it's definitely good for the person that wants more than what their cell phone is giving them. Uh, great for those family events, just to take good pictures and have the versatility of a good zoom. Um, if you guys have any questions about this camera or if you have a camera that you would like me to cover, please leave a comment below so I can get to that and put it on my list. Um, until next time, uh, until next time, keep your eye out for inspiration, Shutterbugs. Bye.